Hello everyone, Reza here. In this video, I will show you how to create an editable grid experience in Canvas Power Apps. We will use the gallery control, add modern input controls, and frame an editable table like experience in Power Apps using a very simple method. So let's check this video out in action. Let's begin creating an editable table experience. You can select any data source of your choice. For the demo, I will be utilizing a SharePoint list, a list that has different types of columns, text, lookup, multi-select choice, person, single select choice. I'll go and insert the container control. In this control, I will be placing a gallery in which I will be placing the modern input controls. Now, why the container? Container has a nice drop shadow effect. In the container, let's insert a vertical gallery. I'll make sure the gallery expands the full width and height of the container. The layout of the gallery, I'll set blank to begin with. In this gallery, I'll be inserting my controls. Fork item is a text control. I'll edit the gallery and insert the modern text input control. I'll place it on the top left. Note, to use modern controls, you need to ensure that under app settings, updates, modern controls and themes is turned on. This control I'll rename as TXT work item. The gallery items property. I will connect this to my SharePoint list, which is called work tracker. That's the list that I connected in the power app. TXT work item. It's value property. I will set as this item dot. This will list out all the columns from my SharePoint list. The title column I renamed to work item. So I'll say this item dot title. And this will give me the title of those work items. The gallery. If I edit the first item is the template item of the gallery. I'll reduce. The height, my list has five rows. If there were more items, they will list out right here. And this is a vertical gallery, so it will get a vertical scroll experience. Project is a lookup column. Here I will use the modern drop down control. I'll place it right next to the work item. Items property will be, since it's a lookup column, Choices of my list name dot the name of my column, which is project. And this will now list out the lookup column values. The drop down control has a property called default selected items. I will set this as this item dot project. There we go. These are all the values coming from my SharePoint list. This drop down, I'll rename it as drop down project. Category, multi select choice column. In my gallery, I'll insert the modern combo box control. Items property will be choices of my data source dot the name of my column, which is category. And this combo box. I'll allow multiple selections and also make sure to rename this to combo box category. Notice it has all those choice options coming from my SharePoint list. Multi select. Combo box default selected items will be this item dot category. You can see all the values showcased from my 
SharePoint list. Assigned to is a person type column. In the gallery, I'll insert another modern combo box. For the items property, I will use under data, I have already connected the Office 365 users connector. So for the items property of this combo box, I will use Office 365 users dot search user v2. Search term will be self dot search text. And I'll pick the top 999 records. And from here, I'll get the value. The same items property code I will copy. And for the combo box default selected items, I'll paste that code. And instead of self dot search text, this item dot assigned to, that's my person type column dot email. And then for the combo box fields, edit, add field. Here I will show the display name. And these are the users coming from the person column. And finally, progress is a single select choice column. I'll insert the modern drop down control. For the drop downs items property, choices of my SharePoint list dot column name, which is progress. So this will get all the progress choice options and default selected items will be this item dot progress. This gallery, I'll call it as gallery work items. So the gallery is a direct connection to my data source. And within the gallery, I am showcasing the column values inside different modern input controls. Now at this point, I can start making changes to any of the control values. This is a people picker experience. How does the user save these updates to the data source? For that, I'll insert the modern button control. I'll position it on the top right. I'll call it save. On select of the button is where I need to write the logic to save the data in the gallery back to my SharePoint list. And I would like to do that by firing a single query by using the patch function. My formula will be as follows. I need a collection of the items from that gallery. I will use the formula clear collect call work items. And the data in the collection will come from the items of that gallery. The gallery is called gallery work items. So for all of gallery work items dot all items. Here I can start framing the columns that I would like to patch back to my data source. I'll open curly braces. That's the record object notation. First property I'll load is title. Title will come from txt work item dot value. That's my modern text input control. Comma project. Project will be my drop down project dot selected. Next one is category. Combo box category dot selected items assigned to that's a person type column in my data source. Now the way we patch person type columns is as follows. We need an object that has the claims token, department, display name, email, job title, and picture. 
in the claims token i need to give the email of the person so i'll get that from my combo box control dot selected dot mail property display name combo box dot selected dot display name email combo box dot selected dot mail that completes assigned to and finally it's my progress column which will come from my drop down progress dot selected i'll close my record close the for all function close the clear collect function format text this is what the formula looks like now at this point if i try and click save this collection call work items will be loaded with data since i will be patching this existing data back to my data source when the user clicks save one of the important things that we need to ensure is that the primary key of that table we need to ensure we are setting that in this collection for sharepoint id is the primary key for all lists so for id i will use this record dot id this time if i click save this collection will also include the id of the record all i have to do is use the patch function to patch to my data source this collection called call work items now here if you notice it's resulting in an error in my scenario and that's because the collection that i am generating i am including the display names of my columns in sharepoint there is the concept of a display name and an internal name for example project if i try and sort on this column you will see in the top it says sort field equal to project that's the actual internal name let's take another column category you can sort or filter let's say i filter on this column notice on the top column name that it is filtering on is called category 0 because that's the internal name of the column so i have to make sure that i use only column internal names here assign to in my case is called assign to 0 now that i have the right column internal names you see my patch function doesn't result in any error and at this point if i go and click save all the updates that i made will now be saved in my backend data source i had picked assigned to as james for one of the items i had renamed the title from project plan to project plan 1 and so and so forth Let's try and change the status of three items to completed. Save. Done. There we go. Three items have turned completed. So you can see how easily I can save the current state of my grid to my data source in one go. To create a new item in my data source, here I'll add the modern button control. I'll position this here. I'll call it new. On select, I will use the following formula: patch to my data source defaults of my data source. A new record is what I would like to create, and here I need to create my record that I want to patch in curly braces. one of the easiest things i can do is in save this was my record i'll simply copy go to new and paste that code here title so when a new record is created i would like to call it as new work item project in my data source as a required field it's a lookup column So the way I'll have to set it is as follows. I have to provide the ID of the item from my lookup list. If you explore my project table, 
ID one is internal. I would like to default to internal to begin with. The way I'm setting it is ID one value. I can leave as empty category. It's not a required field, so I'll set that to blank. Same thing goes for assign two, and for progress as well, I'll set it to blank. So now if I click new, there it creates a new item in my data source. And at this point, I can go and start updating the item. I'll save. The updates would be saved in my list. This exact same concept is what I have built upon further. Gallery with modern controls. The gallery items property is my data source. And because I'm directly connected to my data source, I can also apply filtering, sorting logic to this. I have done multiple videos on gallery sorting and filtering. I've applied those same concepts here. Show me all the work items that are completed where the priority is high currently it's being sorted on created date change the sort direction or sorted based on title i can reset my filters i can create items i can delete items i can make updates and save beyond that I've also given a checkbox experience where I can select multiple items and take actions in bulk, like delete the selected items or make copies of those selected items. I can also select all the records that have been loaded for that gallery and take action. Let's say I'll copy all of these items and now I have a total of 16 records. There's the vertical scroll. So that's the full modern grid experience in action. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.